most plastic bottles with soft drinks have five bumps in their bottoms. At the same time, plastic bottles that contain water and juice have almost flat bottoms, except for a little kink. A bottle is made by putting a plastic tube into a mold and blowing some air inside. This makes it expand until it takes the needed shape. The problem is that bottles usually have an outward kink in the bottom that makes them unstable. To avoid it, some air gets pushed inward from the bottom, creating that small punt. Flat bottoms are more common because less plastic is needed to make them, but soft drinks and sparkling water need special treatment. These liquids have internal pressure that can push the plastic outward. This can mess up the punt and ruin the stability of the bottle. So, soda bottle bottoms have a curved shape because this way they're more pressure resistant. Compare folding a regular piece of paper and folding a paper tube. The latter will have more resistance. Curved plastic is also more resistant to any pressure. Not all insects are attracted to light. Some of them are known to avoid it altogether. But those that are drawn to bright lights have their own reasons. Mosquitoes, for example, don't fly to a light source, like a bulb, because of the light itself. They're drawn to the heat that's coming from this source, which feels nice on a chilly night. Some bugs that eat flower nectar can mistake light bulbs for flowers. The thing is that nectar reflects UV light, and some light bulbs give off the same amount of UV light. That's why bugs might confuse them. Most cell phones that take high-quality photos have several cameras. Each of them serves its own purpose. One lens is typically used for close-up shots, helping make details sharper. The problem is that it's not good enough to capture things in motion, so a cell phone often has another lens for this purpose. All the cameras of a cell phone have to work together, otherwise their individual flaws won't let the gadget deliver the best result. Many plugs, like headphone jacks that you put in your devices, have little plastic rings on them. They're important because they separate different sections of a plug. These sections are called pins, and each of them serves a different purpose. Each plug will have at least one plastic ring, because any plug must be separated into at least two pins, one to cancel out any interferences and the other to carry the signal. If, for example, your headphone jack has one ring and two sections, they deliver the same sound to both your right and your left ear. If there are two rings and three sections, then one serves to cancel out interference and the other two are for each of the ears. Three rings and four sections mean that you have a set, one basic, one for each of the ears, and the last one is the microphone pin. Flies rub their limbs to clean them. As simple as that, a fly has tiny hairs all over its body. Those on its limbs serve as detectors, for example, for finding food. But in the world of flies, tiny particles like pollen grains or dust get stuck to its body, and especially feet. So, the fly just rubs them every time it gets a chance to clean off this stuff. Another thing about flies is that they're really fast. Try to catch a fly, and you'll fail dozens of times. To a fly, humans are sloths. That's because these insects see the world in slow-mo, in comparison to us. Different species have a different perception of speed. The speed at which the world around you moves will be twice faster for a turtle, and it will be four times as slow for a fly. Play a video at 0.25 speed and imagine someone approaching you that slowly. Well, that's how a fly sees you. So yes, the insect has enough time to escape. Tennis balls are yellow for a reason. At first, they used to be black or white, depending on the color of the court. Only in 1972, the International Tennis Federation made it a rule to use the yellow balls we know today. All because this greenish-yellow hue is the most visible to the human eye. Plus, viewers watching tennis on TV can see such balls better. This color is also called optic yellow. It's often used for road signs, too. School buses are yellow for a similar reason, to make them catch the eye. The yellow color is, surprisingly, more visible than, let's say, red. You're more likely to notice it in the dark and on a rainy or foggy day. The color of the bus isn't actually yellow. It contains a bit of orange. The official name of this shade is National School Bus Glossy Yellow. The reason why a basketball is orange is connected with visibility too. Before the 1950s, basketballs were brown. 
A coach of one university team decided that the ball was too difficult to see for both players and the fans. So he started working with one company on developing a more visible ball. They made it orange. An orange basketball was first used in a game in 1958. Everyone liked it so much that it was decided to keep this color. A soccer ball was designed to be visible on a black and white TV screen. Back then, painting a soccer ball any other color didn't make any sense. Black and white created the necessary contrast and people watching TV could spot the ball more easily. Now we have a color television, but no one has cared enough yet to change anything. I guess we're perfectly fine with the white and black soccer ball. In the past, most airplanes were painted chrome or not painted at all. Now, most aircraft are white. Colors absorb light. If you go out dressed in black on a hot day, your clothes will absorb it and you're likely to start sweating. But the white color reflects light. If you paint an airplane white, it'll heat up the least and will less likely be damaged by solar radiation. Also, any other color would fade over time because of the constant exposure to sunlight. White airplanes remain pretty for a much longer time. Also, the white color allows to spot any damage on the aircraft's body more easily. Red, yellow, green. Why are these traffic light colors? Even in our daily lives, red is strongly associated with stop and green is associated with go. The red color has the longest wavelength. It means it can be seen from a greater distance than any other color. For this reason, it's been used for ages as the warning color. Take traffic lights for trains, for example. In the past, green was chosen to mean caution and the go color was white. It wasn't the best choice though, because, for example, stars at night or any other white lights were often mistaken for the white go light. In the end, it was decided to change the go color to green and the caution color to yellow. All these colors were easily distinguishable from one another and also from the rest. The road traffic lights follow the same pattern, red, yellow, and green, except for Japan. Instead of green, they use blue. Since ancient times, the Japanese language has only had words for four basic colors, white, black, red, and blue. Anything that was green was called blue. By the way, in the modern language, Japanese people do have the word for green, but even the word for bamboo, which seems green to the rest of the world, means blue bamboos in Japanese. When traffic lights appeared, they were green, like in the rest of the world, but the official documents still describe the color as blue. The problem is that the international traffic rules and regulations state that one of the traffic light colors should be green. It means the Japanese couldn't change it. Japan found a compromise. They decided to use the bluest shade of green. So technically, the light is green enough to follow the international law. Most movie theater seats are red. This color was chosen not for better visibility, quite the opposite. In low light conditions, red is the first color that fades away in our eyes. And that's what we want in a movie theater, to see nothing but the screen. Now, I have a question. Why those super important stop signs are painted red if it's the first color to fade away when it's dark? Maybe I'll tell you next time.